Do you have a dirty little secret? Welcome to the club. And you're all invited. The first rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club is tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We're handed out memberships free of charge. Step up to the VIP line and let Dana and Brimstone take you on a weekly ride of secrets and debauchery. Now buckle up, Buttercup, because things are about to get heated on the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We're your hosts. Dana Pereira. And it's Brimstone right here. Hey, and Brimstone right there. We're going to have a great show. <laughs> and we're going to laugh and giggle and be happy. And well, it's going to be amazing. Today we have a special guest on the show. Did you know? Did we? We do. It's the gash on my nose. <laughs> uh, you know, I was actually about to ask you that before we started. I was going to ask you how your nose was. So, yeah, would you like to tell everybody just what exactly happened? The silliest thing in the world happened. I was watching Love is Blind. It was the reunion. I was very excited to see it. And there was a surprise moment on the show for me um, where I decided I needed to quickly text my sister. I start, like, calling her really, really fast. I throw my phone up in the air, and I caught it with my face. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Now, now, I mean, I guess you can't really say what the surprise was, or or can you? You can. It's out there already. So they were showing a preview of who was coming up on the next season of Love is Blind. Okay. And it's my friend. My friend is on the fucking show. So his, <laughs> his face pops up on the screen, and I was like, holy shit. And I start, like, calling my sister and... Um, I'm like, can you believe? Because it's actually a friend. Here, you'll love this, Brim. You know my my trips to New Orleans. Yes. It is uh we met a group of guys there in April of 2023 okay. and like had the best time. They were so fun. We were having such a good time. Um, and it's one of those guys that we met while we were in New Orleans. So ev all of the girls that I was there with and the group of guys also, we were freaking out our our friend is on the show very interesting very interesting um what do you call it? what i i mean so okay so now that leads me to the question when he was in new orleans was he trying to get a date no <laughs> no was so he, he he wasn't on the show yet i don't think because that was 2023 so that's a year and okay. a half ago okay. um so he may have been Past on the show i'm really not sure i don't know what the details are and i don't want to come out and say that something happened and like you know get him in hot water mm -hmm. i was talking to him though and i was like you better not let me find out that you're a closeted douchebag like we find out with all of these <laughs> other people on the show <laughs> and he was like well, come on you know me better than that i'm like i know you're not he's not he's the nicest guy i'm really excited for him and i'm really excited because obviously he can't tell me anything that's going on with the show. Right. So I'm really excited to see what his journey looks like. And maybe he'll come on to the Dirty Little Secrets Club when it's all said and done. That'd be fun. That'd be fun to have him. What do you call it? Uh, in the meantime, speaking about journeys, um, you want to talk about the whole Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice journey with <laughs> Charles Dietz himself? I mean, it, like, now I've known, I've known this for a, a, quite some time. Um, it was I, another I, surprise for me. <laughs> it was a big surprise for you. And it was like one of those, like, um, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Coming to uh, coming to life experiences, uh -huh. or, you know, like, oh, my God, this is why he wasn't there. So yes. Would you like to would you like to talk about it? So, I mean, it was spooky season. Halloween was last week. I really I love the first Beetlejuice and I really wanted to watch the second one. Mm -hmm. So whenever I found that it was streaming. And I was able to just, you know, sit at home with my popcorn. I got it and I watched it. <laughs> and during the thing, I was like, why isn't Charles Dietz a part of the movie? Right, right. I was very confused. I thought he maybe died or something. So I Googled him. Yeah. Well, his career did die whenever he was found to be a pedophile and had child pornography. That is why. He's not in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> huge, huge, huge issue. I mean, now this guy, again, now it, what really sucks is, you know, like a lot of people, you know, have watched Beetlejuice. They watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They watch, mm -hmm. you know, all these 
classic, classic films from back in the day. I mean, the 80s, the 90s. And, um, you know, Jeffrey Jones was in a lot of these movies. So, you know, for, for a lot of pop culture fans, you know, it's like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, I would I'm love sure. that guy. And then they realize that this is what happened. Now, at that point, do you separate the art from the artist? Um, okay, so first of all, closeted douchebag, right? Jeffrey yes. Jones. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> just, just really yes. rolling with a theme here. <laughs> um, it, the thing is, I understand, like, he's already in these movies from before, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. You can, though, in the future, be like, no, 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 bruh, you canceled. You're a piece of shit. We don't want to work with you. We don't want you having notoriety or power right. or anything else whenever you clearly abused it and, um, you know, did some really awful, terrible, shitty things. So although the the art is already out there with him in it. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about that? I'm not going right. to cancel the whole movie because they hired somebody that they didn't know was a piece of shit. Right. As far as we know right now. As far as we know right now. <laughs> as far as we know. Who but knows yeah. what comes yeah. to light in the future? <laughs> you never know. I, nothing shocks me anymore. Nothing. I know. So. I know. I feel a little numb to the world right now. You and I have been talking. I, it's been a shitty year, and I have just been like... Oh, nothing, mm. nothing surprised. I just feel indifferent around like the whole world right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, Day. I feel you. What do you call it? And, and you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. It's, it's going to get better. It's getting better. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it, it out is. there that it's turning around. It's getting better. <laughs> well, tomorrow, um, what do you call it, is election day. You know, uh, we record this. We're recording this on Monday right now. And mm -hmm. tomorrow is Tuesday. This will air. On, oh, tomorrow. This tomorrow. tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, it's there's tomorrow. On so, election day. So go vote. If day. you're listening, turn this the yes. fuck off right now. Go vote. Then come and back then come and back. listen to the rest of it. Yes, or listen to us in the car. We're, we're, nice, yeah. we're nice to listen to it. On the way there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I, uh, it's kind of like the Cosby situation. I always loved Bill Cosby's stand-up. I always loved the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. um, but he turned out to be such a creepazoid. Um, I know, you know it's a bummer. And, and you have to, you ha you know, like I, I can't. Maybe I'll never watch the the shows or stand up again in the same light as I had. Mm -hmm. But you know, like some some of like the best things that I've one of my best, um, uh, the, one of the best things that I ever uh have learned and I, I i've taken it from the cosby show and um you know and, and i've used it on so many occasions it's about um did you used to watch the show or, or not really um i did watch it whenever i was younger i remember it very little Maybe. overall okay. yeah so basically there's you know um it's about first impressions and he's telling you know talking about first impressions and I've used this on so many occasions, so many talks, so many, you know, uh, uh, times with my kids. And so it, it, it is it has come across. It's one of the, the uh, it's one of the top um, stories that I ever tell. And um, and it just so happens that he just turned out to be a scumbag. So but that doesn't mean that the story is a bad story. You know what I yeah. mean? Doesn't mean that the art is bad. So. I just, I, you know, it sucks, but, you know, I'm not going to not watch Ferris Bueller. I'm not going to not watch Beetlejuice. I'm not going to not watch The Cosby Show. You well, know what I, I mean? Think that, I think that people confuse the fact that, like, this person did shitty things. That doesn't mean that they're shitty 100% of the time. And I am not excusing or normalizing no. that thing. I just think that, like, we have to realize that even Hitler probably made somebody laugh at some point. Right? Right. Because that's how they move through the world. That's how they, they have to have people like them also. Otherwise, you know, they can't do the shitty things that they want to do. Yeah, we we so, know that firsthand from the, 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 you know, what's going on in the world right now. We're just, but it's when, very nuanced. It's very layered. <laughs> it's, it's all of those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. So. Uh, so, you know, um, Adam and Barbara weren't in Beetlejuice 2 either. 
But the reason that they weren't in Beetlejuice 2 is because, um, you know, time goes by and ghosts don't age, but people do. So, well, they said cool? that that's why because they, they had crossed it. over, right? Yeah. Because at the end of Beetlejuice, they cross over. Well, that's what that's what they said to explain them not being there. Yeah, that's what they said. But what do you call it? Um, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, you know, as much as they could do a, some kind of makeup on them or whatever, mm -hmm. there's, there, you know, they still the age is there. The aging is there. Alec yeah. Baldwin is, you know, three times the size as he was. Totally. He was and younger. Beetlejuice so, still looked like Beetlejuice because in the original, he was kind of like, you know, He's, he's all covered in makeup and looking all crazy, crazy and he creepy. still looks like Beetlejuice. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, speaking about craziness, um, I actually, I, I, this is a, a long term, it's something completely different of what we were just talking about, but also in the celebrity world, um, I came across a an article um, that had to do with a rock legend um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it, Frankie Valley. he's 90 years old at this point and yeah. one of the big things in music is there are a lot of people that lip sync on stage um and or sure. don't really play their instruments on stage um and there are a lot of musicians that would die before they didn't actually sing on stage and perform properly on stage because they feel like they are you know giving the audience what they deserve so apparently there are a lot of you know rockers that are are actually you know completely pissed off and they're tearing frankie valley apart uh because he's been involved in a huge lip-syncing controversy and uh people are calling it a bullshit uh, performance and stuff like that wait um, he's 90 he's 90 so you know at what point do you say okay i can't do this anymore you know i need mm -hmm. to i need to not perform because i can't give people what they want um, but what do you call it? Yeah, no, like you're, you're talking about- But people about... are still showing up though, right? They are, they are. So if people are still showing up and he's still willing to get on the stage and nobody really gives a shit if he's lip syncing or not, then, right. I mean, I guess do your thing, Frankie, but it does concern me why he thinks at 90 years old that he sh like still needs to get up on the stage, whether it's uh, he, he wants to still feel validated or- mm -hmm. Maybe he needs the money or, mm -hmm. you know, like who knows what the what the reason is that he's still getting up there. But if people are still showing up to the shows, who yeah. gives a fuck what anybody else thinks? Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, his wife is 62, which is big, big age gap right there. <laughs> That's is. interesting. That um, is. What do you call it? But they're <laughs> yeah. like, you know, you've got, you know, people like Graham Nash from Crosby, Stills and Nash. Uh, who's 82 and still performs. And um, doesn't like he Mick was Jagger still perform? He's pretty old, right? Yeah. 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 Mick Jagger, they still sing. Um, you know, a guy like Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Uh -huh. um, you know, he still sings, uh, but now he's starting there. I think they're uh, ending. I think this this past tour, or this this current tour, if it's still going, is the last one because of his voice. He's He feels he can't do. Well, what? see, that's another reason that yeah. he might be lip syncing, because as you age, your voice does change. So yeah. he probably can't even still sing the songs in the way that people would recognize it being him. Yeah. If he's 90 years old in his voice, I mean, everything gets a little more frail as you right. age. It's probably really difficult for him to do that. Uh, fair enough. I mean, but again, if you're lip syncing, you're lip syncing badly. You know, at least lip sync. The well. article did say that he was just kind of standing on stage looking like he was like zoned out, not really right. moving his mouth too much. And that's another age thing. That's why I'm like, oh, man, I wonder why he feels like he has to be up on that stage if he's being forced to be up on that stage. Mm -hmm. Like, do we need to be checking about elder abuse here or? <laughs> right. Well, when I when I was here for, with Stan Lee, the last time I was one of the last times I was with Stan, um, and uh, now he, in his 80s and into his 90s, he was spry. Like mm -hmm. he would be, he'd run around quicker than half of us. Yeah. And um, what do you call it? The last time that I saw, he was just completely blank. You know what I mean? And just a shell of who he had been. Yeah. Um, same thing with Nichelle Nichols, you know, and, and again, they're up in the 90s, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, at some point, I guess, you gotta stop. You know what I mean? Or yeah. or 
you know, you keep going and you still stay well oiled like Stan did for, for the longest time. Um, you know, I, I, I got, that's going to bring me somewhere else, but let's, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> Ann Wilson from heart also commented on it. Uh, she's like, you know, he, it's like, he's not even there, you know? And so I, that's I, honestly, a bummer. That's a bummer. a bummer. Uh, speaking about Stan, uh, you know, and, and so forth, um, I kind to you know marvel which is disney mm -hmm. um is, we're just skipping over the marvel part and just going straight to the disney and uh see my my transition there was not good <laughs> flawless. but i'm making it, it work. was flawless <laughs> i'm making it work because i can that's all that matters so um apparently there has been a really good script for roger rabbit too mm -hmm. um but as far as uh, Robert Zemeckis says, now I, he's one of the uh, the filmmakers uh, of Roger Rabbit, the first one. He said that it's never going to see the light of day, and it's because of, and I'll give you one guess. Uh, because va va voom, Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit, because she is too voluptuous and so forth, and... Um, you know, like even in the ride, in the ride in, in Disneyland, um, they have her all covered up and she's in a, a trench she's coat. She's too so risque. She's too risque. She's too curvy. You know what I mean? Um, hmm. And at the end of the day, um, I, see, I can I can agree with his comment and his statement, but I can also disagree with that. This is also the same company that just put out Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With violence and sex and you know what i mean and and cocaine jokes <clears throat> you know what i mean like this well, is there's the the sides of the arguments here i feel like i'm being pulled in two different directions whenever it comes to jessica rabbit mm -hmm. one being that it's an unfair standard for women across the world to think that this is like the sexiest thing on the planet when it's not mm -hmm. um even the norm right right, right. however on the flip side of that, I also feel like fucking celebrate women's bodies because they're fucking beautiful. Right. And so I, I can feel how I could be uh, pulled in two different directions on what I actually think about the whole Jessica Rabbit thing. Because yeah. I think that people should appreciate their bodies if they're, you know, va va voom, great. Maybe what they could do is make Jessica Rabbit a little more of a, a normal woman body that we see typically in the world rather than her, you know, 20 inch waist and but that's not 36 the inch bust. But that's not the character. You know what I mean? It is, but the character's age, right? Like as whenever oh. I was, when I was 18, I wasn't even a hundred pounds. And as you get like, a woman's body changes nonstop throughout her life. Agreed. Nonstop. So I think that it's okay for them to demonstrate with Jessica Rabbit that her body changes through life because that is what happens. That is the norm. I do agree with that. However, it is an animated character. So kind of yeah. like kind of like um, Mickey Mouse and Goofy and, and so forth. Like, all these characters, they don't age. They just always stay the same, and mm -hmm. that's it. So with an animated character, I absolutely appreciate where you're coming from, and I think that that's a fun idea. Um, would they do that? I don't know. Um, well, it sounds like they're not willing to do anything with it. They're like, we have a great script that we're never going to make because, ugh, Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> Which which is like so an stupid. Eve with the apple, <laughs> all her fault. <laughs> it's so. I mean, look again. Like the film had like drug use, even though you didn't really realize it. You know, as a kid, you didn't know that. Oh, there were so many problematic things with so it. So many things. <laughs> it's so many things. Um, you know, bullying, hate. You know, hate mongering. You know, voyeurism, the kidnapping. The Sandlot had shit. You know, like the, with yeah. kids movies all the time. Like a dude faking drowning so that he could make out with a girl. Not great in today's society. <laughs> right, right. It's craziness. So, I mean, like, how have things changed so much over the years where it's like, okay, you look at this and you go, wow, okay, well, that just would not be okay now. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. how did we get away with that then? Yeah. Um, that's crazy. That's craziness. It um, is crazy.
It so is. that's that's the whole situation, Roger Rabbit. I would love for a Roger Rabbit too. Um, I think the real, real reason that it's not going to happen is because, uh, as as we spoke about it, I think on a on a Disney episode of of Dirty Little Secrets Club, uh-huh. um, that what do you call it? Um, Disney and Warner Brothers have this you know anger with each other because uh, Disney screwed Warner Brothers in the first one. Um, where they were supposed to get equal time for all the characters, and Warner Brothers said that that you know, um, they lent they lent bugs to Disney, mm-hmm. um, and then and they w- were expecting they said it was a verbal contract where um the the person who was in charge of Disney at the time said we will lend you Mickey you know in, uh-huh. in exchange for the bugs, and then when Space Jam was coming out and they were doing the whole thing with Space Jam. Disney they was wouldn't. crickets. They Ooh, wouldn't do it. So drama. what do you call it? So and and that was a big problem, which means they kind of nixed that deal, and uh, that's the real reason why. You know, I did a not with the know there was such Disney yeah, drama. Yeah. That's that's the Disney Disney drama. Drama, so, drama, um, drama. Yeah, uh, that that. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, <laughs> Marsha. I I love Roger Rabbit. Wish there would be another one. Um, it was groundbreaking at the time uh i also don't think that it's gonna it would have as uh, as uh much of an impact as the original one did because it's all kind of it's all been there now like people people are making fan films like that now you mm-hmm. know where they're putting all the different characters together you can just smash whatever you want together and make it work these days so yeah um we'll see we'll see maybe one day maybe one maybe day. you never know yeah um Speaking of Disney, we do have another issue with um, a Disney employee. And this one, now I'm wondering if this one has anything to do with the the story that we had been following for quite some time with the uh, the woman from Long Island yeah. uh, who passed away. I don't know if that this has anything to do with that as well. It's... But apparently this guy uh, was fired this this year in June for quote unquote alleged misconduct. Um, it says that he what do you call it? Um, it was not an amicable split. Uh, he was not happy about this termination. But uh-huh. he was accused of hacking the menu system and falsely claiming certain foods did not contain peanuts. Which is That's a so huge issue. Fucked up. So I'm I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you go there now. Let's let's see what what you it, have to say about that. It, it does not appear that the two that the one that we were talking about before is related to this guy. He was just fired in June. Okay. Um, but how fucked do you have to be that because you have an issue with a company that you worked for that you would put other people's lives at risk? People that have nothing to do with that company. It's so ridiculous. People are just assholes. You know, like I can't, and we've discussed it before. People are just assholes and they don't think they're going to be held accountable. And, uh, you know, and then they get caught and then they're not sorry that they did it. They're sorry that they got caught. Uh Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, well, what you just did, every action has a reaction and, and, you know, and, um, what do you call it? And when when you do something stupid like this, which is potentially causing extreme, extreme issues for people that have allergies that are going to Disney to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And what do you call it? Somebody, you know, looks at it, orders something and then goes into some kind of shock uh, or what? What is, what is it called? Anaphylactic shock. Is that what it is uh, with the peanuts and stuff like that? Yeah. Anaphylactic you know, I'm shock. More... You know, at the end of the day, if if you know you, you, you could kill somebody. And so, you know, he might have thought, ha ha ha, well then they're gonna get screwed and they're gonna have, you know, all these issues. Right, they're but, gonna have a lawsuit, but he's yeah. not even paying attention to the fact that he could have potentially killed somebody. And um, he could have. We don't know. It, it sounds like he also did things like change menu prices and added profanity to the menus. So it sounds like maybe he went in there being a little just like being a rascal. 
And then then he started changing the allergen information. Now, that's where you walk into the territory of being a big fucking douchebag that could potentially be charged for murder if somebody dies from what you did. Mm -hmm. Negligent. I don't want want anybody to die. I hope that nobody Mm -hmm. died from it. Me too. I I don't think they did. However, I would have loved for him to really have to pay that price. Yep. Not that I want anybody to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, he should. That's like attempted murder. <laughs> you know, like that's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's so messed up. It's yeah. Somebody like that needs to be taken care of um, in a very, very harmful way. Um, you know, it is what I it mean. Is. I do think that they should have a consequence, but I don't think that they should be taken care of in a harmful way. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you, let, and, you and I are always on opposite sides of the aisle on that one. <laughs> here's a here's a situation. Here's a situation day. Say one of your kids had a peanut allergy, mm-hmm. and you went on one of the days that this douchebag did what he did, and your kid had that peanut. You know, had that thing. Listen, that I to totally drink. get that. I you understand. Would want, you would want pure death for the guy. You wouldn't be like, well, he didn't mean to do. No, you'd be like, fuck this douchebag. He's gonna die. I'm, not, okay. I'm unaliving that some bitch right now. Come However. On. He didn't kill anybody. So even though, yes, there was the potential, he didn't. It was a dumbass move on his part. Yes. I don't wish him harm over it. I do think he deserves a consequence. And if he ended up hurting somebody, he deserves a harsher consequence. Mm -hmm. I'm just not for like, I'm not an eye for an eye kind of a person because I don't think that that ultimately ends up improving anything personally Uh, listen i give it to you (laughs) (laughs) alex is the same way when we do when we like we talked about things before where i'm like i would take this dude and beat the ever-living piss out of him and he needs to be ripped to shreds and he'd be like no that's not gonna solve anything yeah Listen, listen, you and you, 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 Alex, and your kumbaya. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, little hippy dippy shit. <laughs> <laughs> How funny is it that you and I are on the same side politically, but I can go completely off the rails? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Takes anyway. all kinds. It makes the world go around. Meanwhile, you would think that this kid, whoever he was, and however, I I don't know how old he was, but I got to imagine he's old enough to work, you know, for Disney, so he's got to be over 18. I think they said he was 26. Okay. Well, then obviously his parents didn't treat teach him very well. No. Uh, you know, that that's a really really dumb thing. Mm-hmm. Uh which which leads us to this other thing. Do you want to do you want to bring that up? Yeah, so there is a mother out there. Now people, parents, let me know what you think of this. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. This mother has a 20-year-old daughter who lived on her own since she was 18. So girlfriend turned 18. She was like, I'm bouncing. I'm out of here. Yes. I can see why. (laughs) Her mom. Oh, damn. (laughs) (laughs) Give it three snaps. Three snaps and a Z formation right there. Mm -hmm. I know. Her mom now thinks that she should have her birth certificate, social security card, and passport. Like, she has a right to have all of these things. The originals. The, the originals. The originals. Right. How? I, I'm so confused. <laughs> so, okay. When I saw this, I was like, you're going to have something to say about it, and I agree with you. And and I, I was pretty sure that you and I were going to be on the same, you know, uh-huh. Like in, in the same like now when i moved out of my house i'm not gonna lie my mom was pissed my mom was really pissed and she was not happy and she's like you know tried making demands i'm like mom you know i love you but you know i'm i'm not living here anymore and you know i'm old enough that i d- don't have to listen to you anymore right um yeah. you know and there's there's um there's a lot to do with with you know hey you know your kids you're, you're always gonna look at your kid as a kid, you know what I mean and yeah. um, you know as much as uh, you know you might um, feel that you are in charge of your kids is that the best way to say it that you're that you're the boss well once they're eighteen and they decide they want to leave the house you you have no rights whatsoever 
to anything, you can offer your advice. You can offer assistance. You can offer love, help, guidance. But they can give and take whatever they want. You know what I mean? See, it's the, up to the them. The thing now. that I reject is that I do not have ownership over my children. They are their own person. Even right. as a child, I am there to guide them, to protect them. It is my job as the person that brought them into this world without them having an opinion on whether or not they should be here. Right. It is my job to serve my children in the best way that I can for their safe and healthy upbringing. Right. Absolutely. And and once they're ready to leave the home, when they're when it's time to, to, to fly the coop, they're out of the nest. They're out of the nest. And if yeah. they need to come home, then they're welcome to come home. You know what I mean? But, you know, my daughter left when when after she got out of college. You know, uh -huh. it's not that it's not that she didn't want to be home with us, but she was able to get no. a good job upstate. Yeah. So she said, all right, well, I'm moving upstate because I'm getting this job right out of school. And we go, OK, there's nothing I could now I could be like, hey. You should live here. This is my suggestions. I would rather you live here, save some money, and then go move out there. You know what I mean? Get a position here. Yes, I know it's more expensive to live here. However, you know, you're living at home. Save your money and then take that, and then you'll have a little nest egg and can go out and do whatever you need to do. She didn't she didn't keep us you know, hold us to so that. Some she, people she have like a fine. sense of adventure where they're like, I get to be out on my own. I finally get to spread my wings and fucking do things, which right. is and, and there's several reasons that people leave home. One of them is my parents fucking suck. Get me the hell out of here immediately. Yeah. And then other ones are like, I'm going to college. I'm spreading my wings. I'm going to I'm getting a new job. I'm going to travel. I'm going. To... So it's not always bad whenever somebody leaves home, but. There are those occasions where somebody is leaving home because they are like, fucking finally, I can leave this house and legally right. go get an apartment on my own and get the hell out of this madhouse. Right. I think that now. So the mother, the mother wants the mother feels that she's entitled to have and own all the original copies of the Social Security card, the driver's license. The what do you call it? The um, uh, so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, her her um, uh, passport. Now again, now if 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 my kids asked us to hold on to their stuff, mm -hmm. we'd hold on to it for them. But it is up. It's theirs. It it, it they it belongs to them. Now the birth certificate, I will argue with. Only because, you know, the birth certificate, yes, it's yours. But, you know, like, that's what I got when I came in here. But I would go with them to get a new one and order the new one and have another one. But that you know certificate is made specifically for the human being that was birthed. I agree. That and is how they go through life. <laughs> you know, like. You'll get it eventually, though. You'll get yeah. it eventually. <laughs> they, Look, I didn't get, I didn't get mine until jobs later and yeah. passports and just so many things that you need your birth certificate for. So and again, my and my reasoning for that is because you can get another, even though it's not the original original, you can get an original from a certified the, copy uh, yes, of the original. Copy of yes, I understand and that. With somebody like here, I'm I'm 50. You know, if my mother was still alive right now, you know, my father is, thankfully, knock on wood, but if my my mother was still alive and she still had my birth certificate, my original birth certificate, you know, like honestly. I don't need it. I don't look at it. I don't need to, you know what I'm saying? But as long as I have a certified copy of it, I'd rather have that than my 50-year-old piece of paper that I want to keep nice in a book somewhere. Let you hold on to it, and then I'll take it when it's time to take it. That's my outlook that's, If that's that. how you want to do it, that's fine. But if the person that... They all have is, theirs, by the way. They all have theirs. I gave them their... They yeah, wanted I'm it. just we, saying, though, if it. like this daughter is like, I want my birth certificate... Then yeah. she should have her birth certificate. Like the, that is her certificate of yeah. birth from when she was born. It has nothing Agreed. to do with the mom. I have my original birth certificate. It is downstairs in my safe right now. I have the the birth certificate. Though again, I don't find the birth certificate thing to be an issue. Mm -hmm. The social security card is an issue. It's a pain in the ass. You need you need the social security card. You know you need to have a. Uh, I mean, again, it's a similar situation to, the, but, but more so like social security card is, 
you you need you need that um cause yeah and if you don't have things. it it's a pain in the it is a pain ass in the getting ass. a new one is a pain in the ass agreed meanwhile the the passport she bought it on her own uh -huh. her own she then there's no reason for the mother to have the passport nope absolutely fucking not you know why so, would she even need the passport if her well, daughter wants to go fucking travel to paris for christmas she's gonna need a passport right right why like why do you feel the need to she wants to control she wants that's what it is yeah she wants to control she just wants to control my my ex 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 like my first real girlfriend uh -huh. you know what i mean um what do you call it? Her mother used to have such control over her, and mm. she would. She and that was the exact type of situation where she would have to have, you know, her hooks into every single little possible being. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and uh, yeah, that that's. I would never. I would never want to to have anything to do with, with that. I, that's just creepy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what does she do? What does she need that for? Are you gonna? try to go and get credit cards with it like are you gonna try to Steve? get a loan with it like what do you do what do you why need do for? you need all those original documents what are that feels shady yeah like, very shady what are, are you trying to open a line of credit in your daughter's mm -hmm. name like what the fuck are you doing it feels shady absolutely so ladies and gents let us know what you think about that um do you feel that the parents have the right to uh all this these materials or mm -hmm. Do you feel that they uh, that they don't have a right? Let us know. Hit us up on all the social media and so forth. And uh, you know, we want to hear from you. Um, you had a really interesting. One I had a to really gross about. one. I think is what you meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was yes. scrolling through social media and I came across a post, and I don't even remember who it was by. Oh, you know what? I have it up here. Judgy's, Judges Pod. Pod. Yeah. So. I was scrolling. I came across this thing on Judgy's Pod on Instagram, um, and it was about a guy that would take his wife's used tampons, used tampons. Guys, I am so sorry for even making you hear this. Ugh, he would like, put so them in his dehydrator. Like what he would like dehydrate fruit or meat or whatever. He would put the tampons in his dehydrator and Ugh. keep them. And then the wife caught him when she wanted like a sip of his coffee or something. He put the tampons in his beverage in the morning and would drink his like coffee or tea or whatever the fuck he was drinking with her tampon in Ooh. it. That's so gross. <laughs> it's so gross. That's so gross. Like, listen, I, you know, I love my wife, love my daughter, love you, love all my my other daughter, love all the the, the ladies. You're you're all fantastic. Um, periods don't smell very nice. Um, it is unfortunate that the women have to deal with that to begin with. Um, it is like you know, it is something. To, it's life. Um, so it's there. Um, I feel completely awful that you ladies have to deal with this. Uh, you know, it's awful. For, you know, it is the worst. Mm -hmm. Um, and as much as I love y'all, um, I don't want to share any of that flavor. Um, no. in my in in, in, in all, uh, especially not in my you know drink. Well, you know, we are the Dirty Little Secrets Club here. And so and in dirty, dirty Little Secrets Club fashion, I did have to do a little investigative reporting. Oh. I looked it up. This is a kink. It is another kink that we haven't really come across. <sighs> Men are saving their women's tampons. It's, he is not the only guy. Now, uh, not all of How them are not putting them in beverages. I don't know, but it is a thing. It's a kink. It's like there, there are people out there that do this. There are men out there. He is not the only one that save their women's tampons. That's just, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know, Tay. I, I, got, I got nothing. It's, I got it's nothing. a kink that I, I can't I get I, behind, quite honestly. If I walked up on my husband and he had either a used tampon in his jacket or one floating in his drink or whatever, 
That's I, so gross. I think I'm probably filing for divorce. Like, I, I would not. I'm like, what? Your brain is broken. I feel like your brain is broken at that point. <laughs> like, I just, broken. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, beyond broken. Who the I'm, hell? I am not the girl for you, if no. that's what you're doing. No, and and if you expect me to to do anything with it, uh, mm. I am not the guy for you. You know, like, like no. Oh no. God, if there's like, guys look. that are out there doing it, there's probably girls that are supporting it too. Oh God, yeah, like yeah. Uh huh. Oh boy. Blah, blah, blah. Listen again, I, mm. I, I, again, I have no problem being intimate around. You know, with that, right? That doesn't yeah. Bother me. It doesn't bother me, but drinking the blood like i draw the line no I draw the line. no yeah let's no let's not, i don't let's need not do period foam on top of my coffee <laughs> oh god i'm gonna uke that's not oh, don't ever say that don't, don't ever say that again oh wait where are you on the screen now i can't <laughs> i am <laughs> Ill, freaking ill. My apologies. <laughs> I have taken it too far. <laughs> it's okay, Day. It's okay. You you deserve you deserve a good zing. I I took the zing for you. Oh, all man. right. Anyway, guys, what do you call it? That's about all the time we have for this week's edition of the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Uh, what do you call it? Hopefully, you will continue to rate, review, subscribe, hit us up on all the social media. And uh, Danny, you want to tell them again the one rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club? I would love to, guys. The first rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club is to tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Greatly appreciated, guys. Again, thank you so much. Uh, also, just a quick one, uh, Amazon Prime, Seymour the Unfortunate Vampire, finally released. So you can catch me on there. And um, I will hopefully, uh, hopefully get some good feedback from you guys. Anyway, yeah. that's about all the time we got. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Land. You think we want something from you, you got another thing coming.